Burlington, Mass. is booming with dozens of new software, life sciences, and other high-tech companies. But right in the middle of the shiny new office campuses on Middlesex Turnpike lies a mystery, one that stands out like a stone thumb. Say, wait a minute, what is that thing anyway? The handsome stone cottage boarded up for decades always puzzled Burlington native Robert Fahey. Frustrated by the lack of information available about the cottage, Fahey wondered why no one had started a website to capture the town's history before it disappeared. And so I looked in the mirror and I said, that's the guy who's going to do this. The result? BurlingtonRetro.com, a rich repository for old photos and remembrances of Burlington past. Fahey's research into the old stone cottage revealed that it was built by John Kent, a successful brewer in 1850, an idyllic country retreat. It remained in private hands until the early 60s, sold to the RCA Corporation when they moved in across the street. It's been boarded up ever since. That's my bedroom. And my grandmother had this row of roses right about here. Fahey's biggest discovery, the only person alive who actually lived in the Kent Cottage. It was just so beautiful and welcoming. It was just, it was just a wonderful place. Alouette Islin, a therapist in New Hampshire, lived in the cottage until she was seven years old. The youngest of the large, spirited Burns family, she recalls a charmed life of horses, boating, and a private tennis court. It was beautiful. The Nordblom Company, which inherited the cottage when it bought the office park in 2007, graciously allows Alouette inside, accompanied today by her sister-in-law. That was a fun place to hang out under the stairs. But fond reminiscence is shadowed by remorse. It's sad. Um, I remember as a child that I swore to myself that someday I would be rich and I would buy it and I would make it back to what it was. But I'm not that rich. I wish I were. Now, after decades of neglect, the Kent Cottage may finally be getting the attention it deserves. The question for us was, what do we do with this? Todd Fremont Smith of the real estate development company Nordblom, which has, at long last, come up with a plan for the cottage. We've been approved at town meeting to convert that house into two units and to build seven other townhouses around it. And we're hoping to break ground on that next summer. It is a bittersweet resolution for Alouette Islin, the structure of her childhood home saved, perhaps, if not exactly, its spirit. I guess my feeling is that whatever is done is probably not going to be something that I love. And that's okay, it's not my place. But I'm happy to come back and reminisce. For Robert Fahey, unearthing the rich story behind the stone walls and finding Alouette makes all the work he's put into his website worth it. And that's a special thing for me and them. It's a meaningful moment in life. You don't forget these things. It's, it's something that every town should be doing, but they don't. They just let time wash away everything. And it's like it never existed. Stone houses, fortunately, don't wash away easily. Look at that wall. That is a master stonemason who can build a wall two and a half stories high. For such a rocky region, New England has surprisingly few stone houses. But Rhode Island, and only Rhode Island, has stone enders. The stone enders are only in Rhode Island. They're a type that's unique to this state. And uh, you can see they get their name because the gable end is almost entirely of stone. Valerie Talmadge of the nonprofit Preserve Rhode Island, which spearheaded the restoration and recent sale of the Valentine Whitman House in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Built in 1696, the home is just one of a cluster of stone enders in the state. We thought there were nine. But we did a little bit of research and have now confirmed that there are 14 stone enders that are still standing in Rhode Island. The single stone walls were built to support massive fireplace systems. Still, why are stone enders found only in Rhode Island? 
We're speculating that it's an accident of history, that it happened that people who came to Rhode Island with those first settlers must have been stonemasons. And as for that question of why there are so few stone houses in New England compared to other parts of the East Coast, the main reason is that around here we had lots of rocks, but we had even more timber and it was much easier to build with. And back to the stone cottage in Burlington, Robert Fahey's research into the Kent cottage hit pay dirt out at Amherst College. Turns out Alouette's uncle was a well-known Amherst professor who also grew up in the cottage. The Amherst archives ending up containing a box of material on the Kent cottage. Coming up, creating stone and only stone.